Okay, here we go. Okay, over to you, Alfredo. Yes, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Uh, my name is Alfredo Calderon, and together with uh, Lynn McKnight, which is the one waving right now, we're going to be in charge of this orientation session and are in charge of the course. Uh, just some housekeeping, keep in mind that we want you to mute your microphone. If you have a bandwidth issue, turn off your video. And at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that you have a chat uh, box if you're familiar with uh, Zoom. If you're not, let us know so we can uh, point you to where it is. Uh, so having said that, uh, it's important that you all understand and know that all these sessions are being recorded and the recording will be available on a uh, YouTube playlist, which is identified in this PowerPoint presentation. I will be sharing the link in the chat in a while. And uh, the recording will be available once uh, Zoom uh, says that it's available. We'll be posting it in the YouTube channel, in the course, in the corresponding module, and in our social media network, which we will share with you later on during the presentation. There's also a short uh, survey that we would like you to reply to it. It'll take you less than one minute. It's just so that we have a sense of the type of session we're having if we're meeting your expectations. So any questions you can also share with us th through the survey and using the uh, our personal emails. So as I mentioned, I'm Alfredo Caldo. Uh, Calderon from San Juan, Puerto Rico, and we have Lynn McKnight from uh, Canada that's joining us. Uh, I would like to mention that we offer this course free of charge, your fellows for this course, thanks to the sponsorship of the different organizations that you see on the screen. I'm not going to mention them, but they are there, and we hope to keep on having them and more organizations uh, fund this uh, to make it free for you as participants. The agenda we have in place. Uh, we're basically going to give you an, an overview of why we created uh, the Virtual School of Internet Governance, who is involved in it, and some other details on the features and benefits, and what are the immediate outcomes for you as a, a student uh, participating in this cohort, and what you can what, look out for during uh, the next 10 weeks of of uh, presentations and so forth. And if we have some time, we'll have some live walkthrough so I can take you through the course. I can show you a couple of things that might, that we need to emphasize to all of you. Uh, Glenn, the floor is yours. Okay, I am um, i don't see the, um, I don't see the slideshow. You don't see it? No, no, I see, uh, I see the participants on the right-hand side, but I don't see, um, your screen. Oh, interesting. Uh, let me share it again. Share. I can see it's uh, okay. on the screen. You you yeah. you can see it. Okay. I'm I am i am not it's seeing it. Um... Okay, so uh, I'll keep going on then, and until yeah. you can resolve that, yeah. uh, Glenn. So wh why VZIC? Uh, basically, uh, before the pandemic in twenty twenty. Uh, we, we thought of this idea of, of offering a comprehensive free online training opportunity for everyone uh, since we were all in, in, in a lockdown. And we tried to keep in mind that we wanted anybody, no matter what their internet speeds, uh, be able to access the course and they're using a platform that's user-friendly. So that's why we're using Moodle, which is the platform that you have gain access to to look at the material and, and to interact with with the rest of the participants and with uh, us, the uh, speakers and the people in charge. We provide an interactive experience, uh, which implies that we expect you, the participants, to, to speak to us. How, using the discussion forums, we're going to be launching some questions, some ideas, some announcements, and we expect to hear back from you to gather your perspective on each one of those uh, topics that we cover in each one of the modules. So that's why we are encouraging feedback for continuous improvement on the course as well, 
So you'll notice that we constantly will be asking you if you think that there's something missing, let us know so that we can look into it. If you have any reference, any resource that you feel that we should be adding to our course, just let us know and we'll try to uh, to do so. Uh, now, let me let me just add to that. Um, uh, when we developed this back in the summer of 2020, uh, 2020 um, we um, had the uh, opportunity to analyze the online programs and courses that IEEE did. Uh, many of the, uh, which you'll find out, uh, Aaron and, and the other RARs, we uh, were uh, very active with, with the online training with ISOC being uh, a former ISOC international board member uh, and uh, the, within the ICANN space as well, their ICANN Learn. So we had an opportunity to look at the um, learning landscape and so we had a pretty good idea of what was missing, where the gaps were. And uh, so when we hit the road running in, in the summer of 2020, and we had no idea that COVID would last so long, but we started it with the first course and now we're into the ninth version of, and you guys are participating with the ninth version of, of group I and with 72 registrations. Uh, so and and then we have French and Spanish as well. So I, I just wanted to emphasize that uh, it's not just a uh, opportunity that that came to us saying we need to have this kind of training, but we also had uh, experience um, with developing the North American School of Internet Governance, which was a face-to-face -face school, one of the few that are around the world, um, and we couldn't we couldn't get together, uh, we couldn't. Uh, we couldn't have that experience that a face-to-face -face school had. So uh, not to say we replace the face-to-face -face school because it's a whole other type of experience. Back to you, Alberto. Yeah, and, and, and I just want to emphasize that we're not trying to replace the face-to-face -face experience of schools of internet governance. And that's why once... Uh, please mute your microphone, if you don't mind. I think, uh, Eugene, Eugene, please mic me. Yeah, I have to stop. Uh, let me know. Yeah, some, sometimes uh, people get phone calls, so this happens. Okay, I think we got it. Thank you, Eugene. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah, so give me a second, uh, Glenn. I'm going to see if I can give you co-host co rights. Uh, there you go. Okay, so I can go back to the presentation. Okay. Uh, so I was uh, saying that uh, we're not trying to replace the face-to-face -face experience of schools of internet governance, and that is why you can see that in your countries there's a, a someone, a group of volunteers is developing a school of internet governance or an IGF, an internet governance forum, which we will be discussing in one of the modules. So. The basic concept of VSIC is that we're sort of a source of entry level education for the internet governance professional. We're not seeking to get you guys to know everything there is to know about internet governance and the ecosystem. We're just trying to give you an overview so that you have a, a, a sense of where you can go to get more information regarding any one of the topics that we cover and topics that you might feel that we need to incorporate. Now, who is involved uh, in the School of Internet Governance in the virtual school? Uh, I am the academic person, and together with Glenn McKnight, who is the project coordinator, uh, we developed this initiative. And we have, as Glenn mentioned, we have a Spanish version of the course, which is uh, spearheaded by our assistant manager, uh, Lilian De Luque from Colombia. So if some of you are interested in the Spanish course, which is similar, but not exactly has the same content because we're trying to focus on the Latin American and Caribbean uh, community. Uh, you can look into that one for the future. Uh, we have an advisory council, which uh, Bill Juris is a member of, and he gives us great input. Uh, he, as Glenn mentioned before, he reviews the content for us and gives us uh, some ideas on how to improve it as well. We have uh, guest speakers for the live sessions, which are very important. And you'll notice in a while, 
uh, the list of uh, guest speakers we have uh, lined up for this coming 10 weeks. And of course, you, the participants, have an important role in this course. Without you, it doesn't make any sense to have this in place because, mm -hmm. as I mentioned before, we're looking for your input, your interactions, and we want you to be the next generation of internet governance uh, experts uh, to dive into one of the organizations or the community uh, to share your experience and to contribute to policies, norms, and regulations within the internet governance uh, ecosystem. Glenn, anything you want to add? Yeah, just to mention about a few of the advisory council members besides Bill, um, we have Amrita uh, Shouldry. She's from New Delhi. Uh, she's a MAG member with the IGF. Uh, some of you may participate with the IGF. She's been active with the Indian School of Internet Governance as well, which I've attended at least three or four uh, throughout throughout India. Uh, we have Dr. Olivier uh, Krapinaflon. Um, uh, Olivier is, uh, 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 he used to be the, um, a few years ago, he was the chair uh, of the, um, um, of ALAC, uh, which is the at-large community within ICANN, uh, very extensive knowledge in, in the ecosystem. And he's scheduled as our speaker next week on the history of the internet. Uh, we have pa Dr. Pablo Rodriguez from Puerto Rico. Um, he runs uh, .pr, that's a, a higher domain name for, for Puerto Rico. Um, am I missing anyone else on the advisory council, Bill? Uh, Satish. Sorry, who? Uh, Satish. Satish Babu? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah Satish Babu, uh, again, uh, he's chair of the Indian School of Internet Governance. And we've had various different experts that have come in and, and given us uh, direct feedback on different modules while we create the program. So uh, we value our uh, advisory council. We don't see them much in face-to-face, -face, but uh, they're, they're a very important part of what we do. And I want to mention about the guest speakers. I think uh, we have well over a hundred people that we've recorded in, in our live session. So that, uh, uh, repository of, they're all in the playlists, uh, are in very important capture of, uh, the intelligence and the, uh, the views. And we tried to really be, um, uh, uh, North, South, uh, male, female, for-profit, not-for-profit, a real range of um, of speakers throughout the um, the way we approach the the uh, speaker list. So some people have been extremely get, difficult to get, and people have said it's impossible to get them. Uh, like for uh, Dr. Wolf from the National um, Science Foundation, who was responsible for migrating the internet to ICANN, uh, managed to get him. Man managed to get. Uh, uh, well, obviously, Steve Crocker and Vince Cerf as, as the two uh, in particular, and his third amigo as well. But uh, that's that's it. I don't want to uh, retain it. So back to the slides. Sure. So in, uh, uh, you forgot to mention Robert Kahn as well. So we had the uh, three founding fathers of the Internet with us in different instances. And uh, I do want to mention that in terms of the recording, if you count the Spanish and the French ones, we have over 150, and I'll repeat that number, over 150 guest speakers uh, recordings available in the different YouTube channels that you can watch on VSIC. So some of the features that we have on VSIC, uh, it's, it's a cloud-based online platform. Uh, we're using Moodle, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. We're trying to use a, a media-rich online environment. So you'll see that in the content, we have videos, we have audio files, we have eBooks, uh, we have text so that you can read if you want to, or you can hear in some instances, or you can watch. So we're trying to uh, do something that is uh, media-rich uh, so you can uh, understand better the, the material. Uh, uh, we're using a mobile-friendly platform. Uh, Moodle can be downloaded to your mobile device, and you can watch the content offline, and then you can sync again when you have uh, internet connectivity to upload uh, the information so that we know that you've done so. Uh, and that's 
it for the some of the features besides that there is a we we have the live sessions using Zoom. We're using discussion forums, and you have already most of you uh, introduced yourself in the the first discussion forum, and we appreciate that, and we're trying to respond to each and every one of you, giving you a sort of a welcome message, or even pointing you to some specific material that we think, uh, based on your professional background, you would be interested in looking into. Uh, we have quizzes, and we'll talk about that in a while. And we have a certificate of completion, which I will also be uh, showing to you, so you have an idea what that implicates. And starting off with the certificate of completion, each and every one of you that completes all the requirements of the course will get one of these uh, with your name in the uh, sec corresponding section. So that's why in some cases, it's important that you revise your, your profile and make sure that your name is correctly written so that if you decide to complete the course with all the requirements, the name on the certificate will be your name the way you want it to appear. The certificate will be delivered to you via email as a PDF, but it will also be available in the course when you meet all the requirements, which I'll, which I'll share with you in a while. Now, in terms of the Moodle app, uh, the Moodle app, you can download it if you have an iOS device or if you have an a, uh, Android device, going to the website download.moodle.org slash mobile. And what do you need in order to create your account and be able to watch the content on your mobile device? You need the URL of the course. It's internetgovernance.moodlecloud.com. And you, you, you need your username and your password. The password which, which, uh, which you use to access the course initially. So look out for that if you're interested in having a, a, the Moodle app as part of your uh, tools to navigate the course. If you're using the Moodle app, the, these are some screenshots of what you will see uh, on your mobile device. If you're using a smartphone, this is the format that it has. I'm not going to go through it, but you'll be able to see the content. You'll be able to click on the links and you'll actually see the outline for each one of the modules in terms of the objective, the the the, the content itself and so forth. And I'll walk you through that. Sorry, sorry. Uh, there's a question from Sonosi. Um, let me just pull it up because it's it's regarding the uh, certificates. Uh, he asked, so please wear the participant's full name is going to appear in a certificate. I think that's self-evident, but go ahead and repeat it. Sure. Uh, if you look at the certificate, it says certificate of completion. Below it says this diploma rec recognizes and your name will appear there. Uh, right below this diploma recognizes. So uh, that will come up once you complete all the requirements. and uh, And that's it. Okay, that's um, so. No, so you're happy with that? Okay, let's move on. Okay, so as I mentioned, the, these are some screenshots of how uh, the content is viewed on your mobile device. If you're using a tablet, uh, since the tablet is bigger, this is how you'll see it in the uh, the tablet. And you can see that on the left side are the navigation tools on the tablet. If you're using your uh, your mobile device, the dashboard or navigation tools are, are at the bottom. So that's- uh, uh, Alfredo, I, I just noticed, and, and, and you gave a good example in both the tablet as well as this. Folks, uh, take a look at that middle panel. It, it's uh, there. There's a lot of terms we're gonna be throwing out and we, we hope we'll try to give you their acronyms, their short forms of terms, like I can mean something, right? For example. So we we've given you a few uh, links. So make sure you bookmark that because there'll be a, a, a link to it so that you have handy the acronyms and terms that are going to be used through this course. Every profession has acronyms and terms. So this is very important for you not to get confused on some of the terms. So uh, you'll see that in okay. the very beginning. Over to you, Alfredo. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Yeah, sure. And and here in the tablet format, you can see it under the history of internet governance. You have the link to the uh, to the ICANN acronyms and terms uh, website. Uh, it's being updated constantly. There's another one from uh, the uh, Diplo Foundation. And there's a third glossary of terms that's from the GSMA. So you, you have sort of a different perspective and different organizations, acronyms and terms that you can uh, dive into if you have any questions or concerns. If there's a new one, we expect anybody that that doesn't understand what it means to post it, uh, ask the question, and we can uh, actually share it with the rest of the participants. Uh, I do want to show you this uh, screenshot. If you look at the uh, left side, you'll see that that screenshot represents the actual content, which is in a book format. You'll see that each chapter has an icon similar to a book. And if you click on it, it'll take you to the table of contents, which gives you an idea of the different chapters we have. And within each chapter, we might have some sections uh, related to that chapter. So that's what you see on the left. And on the right, you can also have a perspective from a, a tablet point of view, which actually is uh, the actor's uh, Internet Governance Actors module in Spanish. And the one on the left is the Internet Governance History in Spanish uh, screenshots. In, in terms of the quizzes, now, let me talk a little bit about the quizzes. And, and, and sorry for having uh, the uh, interface in, in French, uh, since we've offered, offered the course in French as well. Uh, each module, starting with the history, has a quiz. Each quiz you can take as many times as you want, as long as you reach the minimum score of 80%. So in other words, you need 80% in each quiz, not as a total, but in each quiz, we have 10 quizzes, 80% in each quiz. And that's one of the minimum requirements for uh, to get the certificate at the end of the course. And what's going to happen, you'll see questions that are true or false. Uh, you might see questions that are actually, no, sorry, you might see questions oh, that are it? that are also. Uh, oh, I didn't say that. I didn't know. No, no, no. Please, please mute your microphone. Thank you. Arzuli, oil master go do. I think I think they stopped. Uh, no, they, uh, no, it's still active. If, if you can find it, Glenn, I'll appreciate it. I think we got rid of those. Okay, so let me go back. Uh, so some of the benefits. Uh, for, for you uh, as participants in this uh, environment is that we're trying to give you sort of a roadmap based on some of the key concepts, key issues that are covered within the internet governance. Like for example, the history of internet governance, which is tied into the history of internet, the different actors, and we're going to talk about different organizations. We're going to talk about the infrastructure or the different layers that are involved in internet and the, uh, impact they have in relation to the different organizations. We're going to talk about uh, legal aspects. We're going to talk about human rights, et cetera, et cetera. So, so we, we try to cover a, a, a broad uh, a map of issues in the internet governance ecosystem. Uh, it's important that you understand that we want to share knowledge and experiences so that's why we, we built this course to be as interactive as we can. So if you have any questions, use the discussion forum uh, to post your questions. We're going to be posting questions and we expect to have some input from, from your side uh, during the weekly sessions. And uh, for the weekly sessions, it's important that you under, have a sense of the material so that you'll be able to understand whatever the uh, invited guest speaker ha brings to the table and fe feel free to ask questions. Uh, that's what we're looking for. In order to share knowledge, you have to understand 
and in order to understand, you have to read and, and if you have any questions, ask them uh, to us or to the invited guest speaker. So we're expecting you to participate in all the interactive sessions and activities we have on the course. So what are your obligations as a participant if you're seeking the certificate of completion? The first thing is we expect you to complete all the modules. We expect you to take all the quizzes, which are 10 quizzes. Uh, the minimum score that you need is 80% in each quiz. Quiz You can take them as many times as you want. We're not trying to, uh, to penalize you. We just want you to have a grasp of some of the basic concepts in each module. And you'll see that through the objectives of each uh, module. Uh, Uh, you are muted, Alfredo. Alfredo, sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, I didn't notice that. So, yeah, uh, so, sorry about that, Alfredo. I muted everyone. I and it, it as I thought, at being the host, I wouldn't mute you. I've been getting messages for people to to use the tool to mute. Uh, normally, I don't have to do that. So, uh, everyone should be muted now, except you. Oh, okay, so. Uh, I hope you, I guess I'll have to repeat the, 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 uh, the student obligations are you have to complete all the modules. You have to take all the quizzes. There are 10 modules. Each one has a quiz. You need 80% in each quiz in order to uh, meet one of the requirements for the certificate of completion. Uh, there's a short survey for each one of the live sessions that you uh, should complete as well. And there's a final evaluation that I'll show you when we do a live walkthrough in a couple of minutes, uh, which won't be available until you meet the previous requirements, which I'll be uh, listing in the corresponding order. So some of the housekeeping that we need you as a participant to do. On the top right side, you see that there's a, you, you will see your name and there's a tick there. If you click on it, uh, there's there's going to uh, appear a uh, menu where you have your profile. You're going to click on the profile and you're going to edit your profile. Now, what does that mean? Remember that I told you that the name on your certificate of completion will appear? Well, we want to make sure that the name you want to appear is your name. So you can see that it says student. Uh, this is a fake account. So that's your first name, your surname, demo in this case. So make sure that those fields, those two fields have your name as you want it to appear in the certificate, your first name and your last name. Your email address, since you're here, it's because you received an email through the platform and it probably are receiving messages uh, at this email. But if it's not the one you want to use, please change it here so that uh, we can update that information. Uh, your city, if you want uh, to write in your city, your country, of course. Uh, I, I don't know the country from all, of all of you, but you can individually update that and the time zone if you want to as well. If you want to add a picture, you can feel free to add a, a picture. Uh, it will appear in the top right side of your uh, profile and your account. Right. And to do that, all you have to do is follow the instructions, which I'm not going to go through there, uh, those now, but it's it's simple, it's not difficult to do. Now, the first requirement you have to meet is in, in the introduction module, there's the participant guidebook. What you're going to do is you're going to access it, you have to read it, and there's a button that says, mark as done. When you click on that, it will change to done. And that is an indication that you have reviewed the participant guidebook. And that is one of the requirements you have to meet uh, in order to get the certificate. So make sure that as soon as you have a chance, you read that participant guidebook and you click on mark as done so that it will change to done. Yeah, I'd like to mention, Alfredo, uh, your first letter that everybody got 
you got a copy of it as a PDF. So um, you should be familiar with the uh, the participant guidebook already. Great, great. But it's important that within the platform you click on Mark as yeah, done. That's right. Okay, so make sure you do that. Uh, this is how you can see then your profile. Uh, you'll see that it, it has your picture if you uploaded it. And we have here people responding uh, and we can identify them by their profile. Uh, this is sort of a, a simulation of the uh, discussion uh, forum for, for getting to know the participants, which you have already uh, gone through, basically most of them. Uh, the other important thing that I should mention is that all the sessions have a unique, I repeat, a unique uh, Zoom link. So make sure that you go to the, sec the session uh, that corresponds to the module that you want to watch in the live session. Uh, the link is highlighted. Uh, there's a short audio file that also gives you some uh, explanation that you should look at. Now, I mentioned that in order to get the certificate of completion, there's some requirements. Now, what are all the requirements? First of all, you have to update your profile information. Why? Because we want the exact name you want to appear in the certificate of completion. Uh, you have to review the participant guidebook and mark it as done. The third requirement is, is you have to take all the quizzes. There are 10 quizzes, and you'll see then in the image on, on the right, for each one of the modules, there's a quiz, and you have to achieve the minimum score of 80%, as I mentioned. The other thing you have to do is complete the required completion questionnaire, which will appear once you have done the participant guidebook, once you have achieved the 80% on each one of the quizzes, then the required completion questionnaire will appear and you mark it as completed or done. And as a result, you will see your certificate popping up in the next module, which I'll show you uh, in the live walkthrough in a couple of minutes. And you will also receive it through your email. So having said that, let me stop here and let me switch to the actual website where the course is. Uh, I'm guessing you're seeing this screen. And if you are, uh, in my case, I do have a student account where I'm sharing different courses, but I'm going to go into the one that you have, which is the group I course. And I can see in my case, I have a block here on the right side that shows who is online as we speak besides myself. So what does this mean? This means that I can chat individually with you since you notice that there's a, a call out symbol on the right so I can chat individually with you. Now, the important thing right now, and I'm going to close this. Oh, let me show you something else. Uh, on the right side, besides who's online, there's a calendar. This calendar, the important thing of this calendar is that uh, Glenn uh, and I, we are adding different events that are taking place around the world related to internet governance or internet governance uh, forum, et cetera, or different organizations that have to deal with the internet. And if you you, you you stop on top of it, it'll give you sort of an idea of what the content is. But if you click on it, it'll actually take you to the details of the different uh, events that are taking place and you'll be able to have a sense of what it is all about. Okay, so that's something that you'll see in the calendar. Uh, let me go back to, whoops, go back to the course. It will take a second here. I'm sorry for my uh, internet speed. It's not as fast as it should be today. Uh, so here is the introduction module. And on the right, on the left side, sorry, 
you can see the details of each one of the modules. The introduction one, which already started, and you can see that there's the participant guidebook, and you can click on it. There's an audio, short audio file on it. Getting to know the participants. Uh, this is where each and every one of you have been uh, chatting with us, introducing yourself, and we have in this uh, discussion forum uh, thread, we have 66 interactions already. And so forth, mm -hmm. everybody has been introducing them. Yeah, I, I have to emphasize this, folks. I, I'm really, really impressed with the the participant list. This is exactly the type of target group that we wanted to share our information. Uh, you you folks may know a lot more than us in many of the modules. We don't we don't say we're the expert on every aspect of internet governance. We're just facilitators. So um, if you're for for perhaps a, a, a person involved with human rights or cybersecurity, look through the uh, list and you may find something that's doing exactly the same sort of stuff and you wanna maybe uh, collaborate on a paper or, or do some joint work. You may want, if there's an RFP or uh, a call for, for research or something, this, might, this may be um, a fertile ground for you to meet people that uh, you would not normally meet. So. Uh, please read the um, and, and introduce yourself. And if there's a, a match, we're not saying we're a Tinder. We're not trying to get people to date. We just want you to to be aware of each other. Thank you for that, Glenn. Uh, and you can see that in this introduction module, we also have the session, which is the uh, live session. And as I mentioned, each one has a unique link, mm -hmm. uh, which you use to register. And you will get a, a confirmation email with the, your personalized link for the live session. So keep that in mind and you can go through all of them and if you want to today and, and have them in your uh, calendar. So let me go to the, uh, the first module that actually has content that we need to review. The history of internet governance, which, which will take place next week. We have the objectives. You'll see that there's a list of objectives there's a short audio file that also speaks on, on the objectives. And we have some, some kind of, of introductory uh, material that uh, gives you a sense of what you can expect in the module. Uh, so you can go uh, through that. Now, the actual content in a book format is what is under the history of internet governance. And you'll notice that there's the... Uh, uh, the ebook or the book uh, icon next to the title. And on the right, you'll see the table of content. I'm going to collapse it so you can see that you can expand it. And here's the uh, table of content for the history of internet governance. If you want to navigate through it, you can do it in the sequence that the, the topics are, or you can skip some and, you know, go back and forth. Like, for example, if you're interested in the work, World uh, Summit on the Information Society or WISIS, you can click on that and it'll take you to that chapter. And then you'll see that there's a short video of that inaugural uh, WISIS Summit that took place a few years back. And if you want to go back to ARPANET, you can click on ARPANET and it'll take you to ARPANET. And you can see some information, uh, videos and interviews with uh, Vinserve and so forth. So that's what you'll see there. Uh, you can join the discussion. Each for each uh, module has a join the discussion, which is a discussion uh, forum. And you can uh, share as you can see that Glenn and I have started doing in, in different, uh, on different issues that we want you to get to know about as part of the history of internet governance and the quiz. So here's the first quiz. It says when the quiz opens and it gives you a clear date when it will close. It'll close on the 27th. And the minimum uh, points you have to get is 13 out of 17, which is equivalent to 80%. Uh, this is just the number of questions or answers you have to provide out of 17, uh, but it will translate to 80% 
when you go to the uh, grade book, and I'll show that to you in a second if you want to see it. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm going to attempt this one since I'm a student. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, each one has different, different types of questions. This one has seven questions, and I'm going to go to question six. Question six is a true and false question. If I go to the previous page, it'll take you to uh, question number five. Previous page is question number four. This is uh, select one. So this is a multiple choice and so forth. So once you complete the quiz, uh, the last question is, uh, which is number seven, you'll see that after that question, uh, this one is a uh, sort of a matching question. If you finish your attempt, you can see all the uh, questions that I haven't answered. But anyways, I'm going to submit all and finish. Uh, and you'll see that it gives you some feedback. But if you still want to submit it, you can do so. And it'll show you exactly how much you got. And in my case, I got 0%. And I told you that we need 80%. So you, you need to uh, reach that minimum goal in order to have that quiz as a successfully done quiz as part of the requirements. Uh, an important section, section in each one of the modules is the complementary resources. What are the complementary resources? Well, everything that we think complements the main content of the module, which we don't want to add to the main content because we don't want to uh, uh, overburden you with uh, a lot of material. But if you want to look at it because you feel that you need some more in-depth uh, information, you can find it here. And if by any chance you feel that there's something we're missing, uh, please let us know through the join the discussion. Uh, give us a shout out and we will try to identify the resource in a proper manner and format. If we need to get some copyright uh, authorization, we'll work on that as well so we can share it with you. And we, as I mentioned, we have different formats. We have ebooks, we have videos, we have audio files and so forth. Yeah, let me just point out, see, just keep um, keep on the screen you just had. Uh, okay. I just want to show the ebooks. So what we've done, you see Flip HTML5, uh, the book there, you can, inc uh, you can increase the size so you can watch it, you can zoom in, and importantly, you can download this ebook. So you can you can view this, save it as a, a, a share it with yourself. Uh, so you can build your own library using the material. We are not territorial with this. Uh, we went out and, and or we are not charging for this. So it's a, it's a fair use um, licensing approach. So we are uh, trying to encourage uh, the, the distribution of, of the material and it's up to you how you want to use it. And, and we don't expect you to, um, uh, you know, to absorb all of this material, you may want to create your own library and start stuffing this material in uh, with with a separate uh, location and look at it at a later time. Uh, but we had a question uh, again back on the quiz. Uh, so, um, does the time have impact on the quiz? It's from Sonosi. Uh, if by the time you mean mean that it, you have five minutes to complete the quiz, no, it's open. Uh, you can, uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, try it as many times as you want. You'll see that it tells me that I failed, uh, even though they received, uh, the system received the grade. Uh, I finished one attempt. I can review it. I can go back. Uh, and then I can take it again, uh, as I mentioned. But you have until November the 27th. Yeah to complete the, the, yeah. the quiz and the course. Yeah, the quizzes are, are memory aids. This is not to trick you. This is not, you know, we're not being a punitive teacher. Uh, this is, these are not difficult. Uh, you know, uh, if you don't get that question right, then guess again. Obviously, if you guess true and the answer is false, obviously. Uh, but the idea is that you're learning by going through the process. But, you know, we're not, 
we're not here to punish you. We're just, we're, this is just another additional tool that's built in with this platform that, that uh, it helps you along. In many cases, you, many of you may not be absolutely not interested in the certificate. You just want to access the material, access to get to know each other, and that's fine too. It's not a judgment. We're not, we're not in the game of totaling how many people successfully complete our program. This is an adult-driven program. It's really up to you what you want to get out of this. We, we structured this quiz thing. It's not punitive, it, it, and it's meant to be a memory aid. Thank you for that, Glenn. And as you saw, I did the quiz again. I got 35%. I still need to review the content or the, the uh, answers to the questions in the quiz so I can get to the 80% uh, right. that I need to uh, uh, pass that quiz. So uh, to fi finalize this, uh, I, I, in the second module or the history of internet governance, here is the link to the uh, uh, Zoom session that you have to uh, register for this uh, next week's uh, module. And as I mentioned, you click on it, it'll take you to the registration form so that um, you can. I, I have to say something about the registration form. David yeah. uh, mentioned that there wasn't any link, but uh, I go, oh, I forgot to put it in. Actually, because uh, Ram Mohan is going to be tied up at the ICANN meeting, I'm coordinating to, to have a recording with him in advance. Uh, so there'll be a recording on the site, so there won't be a live session during that uh, the legal. So if you clicked on the legal uh, session, you'll see that it, it'll say, you know, it, it's it's a recording. So, um, so see, it says this session will be previously recorded. So that that will not be a live session because it's conflicting with the ICANN event, which is all week, and, and which we'll be putting into the calendar. And if you have time to, to join any of the ICANN meeting, we strongly suggest it. Yes. Uh, so having said that, and I'm trying to finish, I'm going to go to the last uh, module, which is the Emerging Technologies uh, module, which, by the way, was a result of a comment made by a few uh, students back in group uh, a or group B that they uh, felt that the emerging technologies should be a topic that should be covered as part of the internet governance uh, ecosystem since uh, emerging technologies are new things that impact uh, policies, norms, and regulations within the different organizations that uh, sort of manage the way we use the internet. So mm -hmm. what, what happens in, in, in this module is that Besides all the usual content that we have, we have a section that says required completion, and I'm going to click on it. Uh, this session has an audio file that gives you some instructions, but again, it will not appear until you click on the participant guidebook marked as complete until you complete all, all the quizzes with a minimum of 80%. And then you have to uh, do the survey, which is someplace. Right here. Mm -hmm. uh, where's the survey? Right there, right in front. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So once you uh, do all of that, and you complete the, the survey, you'll see that the certificate will appear here, which is right now inactive because I haven't met all the requirements. Okay. Right. So having said that, uh, that's what uh, we have here. If you have any questions regarding this live session, otherwise I'll go back to the uh, presentation. So Glenn, you can walk us through the different speakers we're going to have. Sure. Uh, okay. So, um... Uh, let me just check if there's any questions. No. Okay. Let's move on uh, with the, um, okay. So we have, uh, as it states here, it's a, a quick uh, review of, of the sessions. So next slide, uh, given time, uh, Dr. Uh, Olivier Carapin Leblanc will be doing an overview on history. Uh, and that's next Monday. Next one, uh, Joe Capitano from uh, ICANN 
He's the uh, works with the uh, VP of ICANN for North America. He'll be going over uh, particularly ICANN's role within the ecosystem. And this session is on called Actors. Next one. Uh, Jim Print Pendergast, uh, some of you may know him. He's been very active within the IGF USA and the IGF, uh, uh, very involved with the business community. So he's got serious insights into the uh, inner workings of the infrastructure that makes up uh, the backbone of the internet. Next slide. Uh, I can't put her name because this is such a long process. NTIA is part of the US government and they are responsible for rolling out the internet for all. It's a multi-billion dollar uh, program for uh, internet connectivity in throughout the states, um, poor communities and urban areas, rural, tribal lands, uh, Alaska. So uh, it takes months to get approval of somebody from the government and <laughs> Alfredo knows this process. So Cindy uh, is the assigned person uh, that, that I have. If it turns out and these things happen, uh, I have a backup from the F Benton Foundation, which is very familiar with the U.S. strategy for um, connectivity. Uh, and this is community uh, networking. Uh, and, and that's consistent to other sessions we've done in India and elsewhere on community networking. Uh, next one. Okay, security. Uh, this gentleman, um, um, trying a blank, but he's, uh, again, he was responsible for the uh, cybersecurity responsibility to the U.S. government. It's uh, Christopher Painter. He'll, he's now with a agency out of Holland called the GCFE. Uh, he'll be speaking on security. Next one. And that's the recording. Uh, that'll be Ram Mohan. So the recording will be posted on the uh, on this section. So Ram is, well, it's a long history. He he was um, with Affilius, and Affilius uh, then got morphed into Donuts, and then Donuts got morphed into Identities um, Digital. So he's a VP of of um, uh, Identities Digital. So it's his name is Ram Mohan out of Philadelphia. Next one. Uh, economic uh, PhD, uh, um, Dr. Nuno Garcia from Portugal will be speaking on the economic impacts of, of the internet. Next one. Uh, Stacy Gildenston and Pirate Pazzle, they're from Australia. They'll be talking about human rights, particularly um, young folks uh, in terms of their rights online. This is a group of people that have grown up digital. Uh, they have created a new IGF uh, dynamic coalition called DC for Teens. And um, uh, Pirate has uh, is part of a book with uh, Vince Cerf, uh, which is quite exciting. So uh, Stacy and Pirate will be joining us from Australia on November 6th. Next one. Uh, there's a, this is a fairly large group. I, I'm part of this group and uh, Javier Noe for from um, uh, Puerto Rico, Perry Estefari from Washington, uh, LA and London, uh, Raul Plumer from Finland. Um, there's a, and I'm trying to uh, remember who else, but it's a large group that's trying to promote a uh, green internet. So we're gonna have a very lively discussion on the ecological and the, the carbon footprint of the internet. So that'll be on um, November 13th. Uh, and then we have a former ICANN board member, a very articulate, very knowledgeable, Vito Avera. He's, uh, sorry, is he from Guatemala or El Salvador? El Salvador. Uh, yeah, he'll be our speaker on emergent technology. And maybe we didn't mention this. Emergent technologies was not one of our original modules. It was because of feedback, just like that feedback you're going to do at the end of the program, it's feedback from, from participants that suggest that we needed stuff on AI and, and uh, uh, Internet of Things and stuff. So we incorporated in the last few modules, at least last four modules, this whole thought. And it's one of the more popular modules we have. And I think that's it. Back to you. Uh, yes, uh, we, we have this uh, paraphrased uh, statement. Uh, you can please... Uh, some of the people or the t all the time, 
and all of the people some of the time, but you cannot please all of the people all of the time. And what we mean by this uh, uh, statement is that we know that we're not covering all the issues and all the concepts that you might be expecting from us, but that's what we need your feedback for so that we can try and add as much as we can and make it as user-friendly as we can. And keep in mind that we have the complementary resources area where we're trying to create this rich uh, database that you in the future should be able or will be able to search and gather all the material that you need if you want to uh, learn more about a specific concept or issue in internet governance. Back to you, Glenn. Okay, so I've unmuted everybody. Uh, sorry about the um, the glitches today with some not muting people because I didn't want to mute Alfredo, which I ended up doing. So uh, after we got that solved, I I I believe anybody who wants to ask a question or or say something, uh, this is a great opportunity. Uh, feel free uh, or type in your your comments. Um, In the I don't, meantime, see, I don't yeah. see anything in the uh, chat. Okay, so in the meantime, I'm sharing here uh, some information on how to contact us and how to follow us. We have a website, uh, virtualsig.org. Uh, the platform, of course, you know the URL. Uh, there's a frequently asked questions section in the website. Uh, we have a presence in Facebook. It's virtualsig. You can also reach us through email. Uh, Glenn through info at virtualseek.org and myself through registration at virtualseek.org. So, uh, Glenn, do we have any questions? Uh, I really uh, thank you all for coming today, and and um, we uh, really look forward to um, seeing this this course. This is uh, it's well over a thousand people that have taken advantage of our program, um, and when we we some of you are coming from uh the digital rights community some people are coming from academia some it's, it's a, there's really in common with anyone here like normally when you have a course everybody's similar age and similar background and look this is as diverse as you can get and and we're really pleased with that so um you know feel free to reach out to us at whatever we can do to help you uh if if you want to connect with someone uh, and most of our speakers are pretty, pretty generous with their time and stuff. Uh, so, um, you know, we're happy to make connections. So, uh, and again, uh, thank you for, for joining us. And we look forward to this course. This course wraps up. And when it wraps up, and I have to emphasize this, uh, what's our closing date on this? The 20... 27th of yeah, November. Yeah, that's it. Don't come back to us say, hey, I like that material because we pull all the names out and because we have to get prepared for the next group, which will come uh, and it takes about a month to turn over for the, the next group. So, so if you haven't completed things or I wanted that, that, that material, uh, it, what is gone is gone. So uh, we don't, we don't share your reason, your information because we only have a limited license with Moodle. So uh, we don't have thousands of licenses. So we need to free up the space. So, We'll probably be doing our French course starting in the new year, Spanish and English. So it's going to be even tougher for us. So, but right now you've got 100% of our attention. Uh, so feel free to lean on us. Uh, we're happy to help you. Well, having said that, uh, thank you all uh, for participating. Have a great day and we'll see you on the net. Bye. Thanks everybody.